Hi, I'm Hazel, and today I'll be presenting Graphite, a racket library for data visualization I've created with Sam Tobin Hochstadt of Indiana University. Let's take a look at some data. In particular, let's look at the Gapminder dataset, which provides various summary statistics about different countries in different years. We read this data from a CSV file into a data frame, a tabular representation of the data with various columns that each have names. For example, we can say that in Afghanistan in the year 1952, there was a life expectancy of 28.8 years by looking at the first row. Let's create a plot with graphite. So we start off with the graph function, which takes the data directly in its tabular form, and we map the x-axis to the GDP per capita variable and the y-axis to the life expectancy variable. We then give graphite the points renderer, which tells us to draw a scatter plot. This directly produces the image you see on the right. Now, this is okay, but the issue is that we have all of this white space in the bottom right corner. So how do we deal with that? If you're a statistician, you may be inclined to add a logarithmic transform. So graphite makes this easy with a single keyword change, as well as various other aesthetic elements being easily configurable in the same way, such as adding labels or adding point opacity. However, sometimes you want to map these elements non-statically. For example, if you wanted to create a colored legend. Graphite makes this easy with the idea of the aesthetic mapping. Here, we map the color aesthetic of the points renderer to the variable continent. This then assigns each continent a unique color and changes the point color according to where it came from. In addition, graphite's renderers are additive, so we can specify a fit renderer with its own set of aesthetic elements, and it is drawn alongside our points. So where did this philosophy come from? Graphite is heavily inspired by the library ggplot2, a wildly popular R library for data visualization. ggplot2 is designed around the grammar of graphics, a philosophy that gives you the ideas presented before you, like aesthetic mappings or additive renderers. In addition, ggplot2 is part of the tidyverse, a software package based around tidy data. Making assumptions about this language of data allows us to abstract in ways the prior work has not. For example, Racket already has a library called Plot, and Plot is great. Graphite uses it, but the problem with Plot is that because it is not standardizing on one form of data, it is occasionally inconsistent. By standardizing on this form of data, we're able to greatly reduce the amount of code that goes into an average plot. These two pieces of code produce the same image but the left code is 41 lines of code, and the right code is 18 lines of code. And more importantly, because we built the code on the right, we know that it closely follows the statistical reasoning that we want to have while doing exploratory data analysis. Let's make another plot with graphite. Here, we'll reuse the same data as before, but instead make a time series of year versus GDP per capita. We use the lines renderer instead of the points renderer to draw a time series and we map the color aesthetic to country. This is a giant mess. Namely, we have this giant mess of color towards the bottom. We have this line that we have no idea where that's coming from. And there's no way to make any reasonable observations from this data. So in order to help clean this up, we have the idea of a facet. If we wanted to observe stuff by continent, we can then facet on the variable continent using the special aesthetic. Here, Graphite splits up the plot into five different subframes, each corresponding to one continent. This is better, and we can make more reasonable observations with it, but it's still a mess. Namely, a bug in the data set involving the GDP per capita statistics for Kuwait makes the y-axis really wonky. And also, we have this giant mess of color. If we're lazy and we don't want to mess with the aesthetics, we can then just map the color to gray, and then add a logarithmic transform to the y-axis to mitigate the bug involving Kuwait. Then, we can add a fit line to each individual subframe, and we're off to the races. We now have a reasonable idea of how GDP per capita progressed over time in each continent. Let's take a look at a new data set using graphite. 
Here, we have the General Social Survey from 2016. We have various individual level observations about various social questions, such as marital status or the number of kids an individual has. Now, let's say we wanted to make extrapolations about the percent religious preference by census region. So, for example, knowing what percentage of people in the Midwest were Catholic. The problem is that we have this individual level data, so we would need to make some kind of transformation on the data in order to get graphite to do what we want. This transformation would look something like this. We take our individual level data, so for example, we know somebody in the Northeast is Catholic, and then we summarize it down into a smaller table where we count the number of rows that have Midwest Catholics, the number of rows that have Midwest Jews, etc. Then we would want to take this and convert it into percentages. So summing up all the people in the Midwest and dividing the results of the previous one by that. This would then give us the frame we want. But we don't have any tools to do that, or do we? Sozzle is a racket library for data manipulation, like map, filter, and fold, but for tabular data. It is heavily inspired by the tidyverse libraries dplyr and tidier. So what is tidy data? The idea is that data frames are just a record of vectors, and we work with data by variable, so you should be able to get a variable by selecting from the record. To accomplish this, every column in a data frame must be exactly one variable, every row in the data frame must be exactly one observation, and every cell in the data frame must be exactly one value. This gives Sozzle and Graphite a consistent philosophy to read data about and reason about for the sake of abstraction. So how will we express the prior transformation using Sozzle? First, we read in our data, and then we group it with respect to the big region variable and then the religion variable. This tells subsequent operations how to handle stuff. Then, we use the aggregate operator, which behaves somewhat like fold. We create a new variable count that depends on the variable big region, and then we compute the length of that variable. Namely, because of our grouping, this works within every possibility for the variable big region, and within every possibility of the variable religion within that. So this gives us the count statistics that we want. Now we know that there are 172 Catholics in the Midwest. This is decent, but we want to know percentages, not counts. To do this, we can use the create operator, which behaves like a combination of map and apply. Here, we create a new variable frequency that depends on the variable count. We bind the variable count as a vector, and we divide every variable in the vector count by the sum of that entire vector. This gives us the frequencies that we want, and then we want to map over that, converting that into percentages. So we create a new variable percent that depends on frequency, binding it as a single number, and then mapping over that, multiplying every one by 100, and then rounding it. Finally, we can save this as the variable religion by region, map the x-axis to religion, the y-axis to percent, and facet on the variable big region. We use the call renderer to tell Graphite to draw a bar chart. And now we can make some extrapolations. For example, we know that in this data set, there were approximately equal Catholic and Protestant respondents in the Northeast. Throughout this talk, I've been discussing the importance of tidy data to Graphite and Sossel's abstractions. But what happens when the data just doesn't speak our language? Here, we have the Billboard Top 100 data from the year 2000. This data tells us, for example, that Baby Don't Cry was 87th on the charts at its first week after release. The problem with this data is that we have all of these WK columns, which represent the week from which a certain observation came from. But these aren't variables. They're actually values of the weak variable. So a lot of Graphite's operations and a lot of Salzl's operations just won't work here. So what do we do? Effectively, what we want to do is take all of the WK columns and turn them into values of a variable weak. Then take all of the rankings that are in each column 
and turn them into values of a variable ranking that is all of the combined columns. This would then tidy our data. For this purpose, Graphite provides the pivot longer transformation, named as such because it literally makes the data frame longer, removing columns and adding rows. We turn the names into a variable called week and the values into a variable called ranking, and we now have tidy data. In addition, it may be advantageous to have the week be a number, for example, if we wanted to make a time series. So we make a new variable called week that depends on the old variable called week and just converts it into a number. We can then save the result of this operation as the variable tidy billboard. Let's say we want to do some data analysis with it. For example, let's say we're big fans of Blink-182 and we want to know how they did in the year 2000, for nostalgia's sake. We can start off by filtering down this data into solely rows for the artist of Blink-182. We can now see that All the Small Things was the only song that was on the charts in this year. Then, what we want to do is get rid of all of these false rankings because that represents that Blink-182 was not in the charts of that week. For example, they weren't on the charts in week 28, but they were in week one. We can use the drop NA operator to do this, and then we can sort by week with the reorder operator, and we have something we can give to Graphite to make a time series. We can put this directly in our pipeline, mapping the x-axis to week and the y-axis to ranking, and draw a time series with the lines renderer lower being better. And now we know how they did. Graphite is more generally useful than the examples I presented in this talk. If you're interested, please check out our GitHub repositories and our guided tutorial. Thanks very much to Kieran Healy for his excellent data visualization textbook, from which the majority of examples in this talk originated from. Thank you for your time.